there alone. Verse 24. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the ah. land. For a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. Uh -huh. Verse 25. About 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them. Somebody said Jesus came to them. Jesus came, came to them. Yeah, he came to them. Jesus came toward them walking on the water. Uh -huh. Verse 26. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Uh -uh. Verse 27, but Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he Not said. Afraid. Take courage, I am here. That's a Thank word for some of y'all this morning. Hey, don't be afraid, he said. Jesus. Take courage, I am. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid. afraid. He's already here. He's already, he's already here. here. Yes, he's already here. Don't Thank be afraid. God. Verse 28, yeah. then Peter Thank called you. out to him, Lord, if it's really you, Tell me to come to you walking on the water. Verse 29, yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Yes. Verse 30, but when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Somebody shout, save me, Lord. Save me. Yeah, he just did, right when you called Thank out. You God. Verse 31, which is our focus yeah. verse, Jesus yeah. immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, yes. Jesus oh said, why did you doubt me? Oh Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we honor you this morning. Thank you, we praise your name. We give you glory. We give you honor. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, for these last two Sundays that you have yes. overtaken Hallelujah. our service. Lord God, and giving us the ability to worship you and to praise you and, and to allow some things to transform in our minds and in our hearts. And God, today we seal that last two Sundays with this Sunday with the word of God. And God, we thank you for your word this morning, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is transforming our mind even by the reading and hearing of the word. And we thank you, Lord God, that this word will be planted on great soil this morning and it will spring forth life in us out of us, Lord God, and we'll be able to go out and plant seeds of living water. We'll be able to go out and plant seeds of righteousness and holiness. So God, we ask now that you allow your word to illuminate itself even the more. Allow your word to filter through our, cell, our brain cells, Lord God. That it would transform the very essence of who we are. That it would change the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we live. And we'll be kingdom-minded citizens for your sake. We'll be kingdom-minded citizens for your glory. And even now, in the name of Jesus, we ask now that you will break this word and you allow it to filter yeah, in our spirit Jesus. that we may manifest on it and we may yeah. uh, chew on it and we may yeah. digest it, Lord God, and it will come forth in our heart and it will carry us through our week, Lord God, that we'll be changed. Yes, so God. have your way in this place yes, Lord, by God. your spirit. Thank you for the worship opportunity. Then we thank you, Lord God, that your word should give us knowledge. Your word should give us clarity. Your word, is, word should give us boldness. Your word should give us understanding and wisdom. Even now in the name of Jesus. So have your way. Use me for your glory even now. Speak through me. Speak through your word even now and we give you praise and honor for what's getting ready to come forth in the word of God and we, we shout thank you Jesus for the word of God is we thank you for this word praise the of Jesus we thank him for this great word hallelujah praise the name of God hallelujah y'all may be seated Praise the name of God. Amen. 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 Praise Thank God. You, amen. Amen. I, I'm really excited about this word. Praise Thank God. God. Amen. We are excited to share Thank the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We have not been able to share the actual word of God in the last two weeks. I'm just excited. Thank you, Amen. I feel like I know God is here. Amen. And he's not here because we invited him in. He's here because we brought him here. Amen. And so I'm excited about that. Amen. You, and so we're going to dig right in this word. Amen. And so, but before we go there, Amen. I want to just share with you guys um, that I am so grateful for every last one of you and your and your opportunity to serve unto God. It is not going to notice, and I just thank God for your faithfulness and your Amen. dedication Amen. and your commitment to the kingdom, building up God's kingdom. That's what we're here to do. Amen. And so, as I am pressed upon to share this word with you this morning. Amen. I, the Lord had dealt with me uh, on my birthday weekend. Amen. That you also graciously blessed me with. I'm so thankful for you. Amen. Amen. I was in Charlotte, praise God. And 
And the Lord began to deal with me. Amen. I preached uh, about two weeks ago, I believe. Amen. A sermon called Solid as a Rock. Amen. And some of you had the privilege of being there. Amen. If you did not have the privilege of being there, I have copies of CDs for you. Amen. amen. And so if you like those, just see us at the church and we get you those. And amen. For those who are watching on Facebook, amen. You'll eventually be able to visit us at www.bcdcministries.org. And you can listen to that sermon there. Amen. amen. And I said all that to say that God has pressed upon me to do a series. Amen. To do a series. And it's called The Rock Cycle. Okay. Okay. It's called the rock okay. cycle. Amen. And so uh, I know some of us wasn't able to be in presence. So pick up this word. Amen. And that's the beginning of the rock cycle. Amen. A solid rock. Amen. And so today I want to continue this, this cycle with the title that you're almost there. Almost don't there. stop now. Thank you, God. You are Thank almost God. there. Don't stop now. Amen. And so with me dealing with the rock cycle, what better person to deal with than Peter? Uh, what better person to deal with than Peter? Peter, um, the, the Bible declares that Jesus called him uh, the rock. Amen. Peter, which means rock. Amen. And so he told Peter, he said, upon this rock will I build my church. Amen. And we understand that rocks amen, are designed and created out of minerals. And we understand that minerals, amen, is made up of dead material. They're not naturally, they're naturally made. They're not made in the laboratory. Uh -huh. They're not made in somebody's house in their yeah. kitchen, amen. They're, they're made in places where you can't see them, amen. And so when several minerals get together, they compress and, and weathering and, and, and weathering and all of that stuff get together, rocks, the minerals end up piling up together. And over a period of time, they develop what we know as rocks, amen. And so we understand that rocks are solid material. Amen. And so he, he and, and, and if rocks are solid and they're made up of minerals, which minerals are made up of dead material, Jesus was simply telling Peter, upon this dead material, upon this dead person who uh -huh. dies to himself, will I build my church? And I want the church to understand that you God cannot build his kingdom in you or upon you if you don't die to yourself. That's right. That's right. God cannot God, God cannot elevate the kingdom of God on earth if we don't die to ourselves. We understand that the church is not the four walls. That's we understand right. that you and I who live, move, and breathe. We are the church. Amen. Right. And so if God is telling Peter, upon this rock when I build my church, which Peter is a person, he simply can say the same thing you to you today, that if you die to yourself, yeah. that your ministry that I place inside of you will yeah, be great, yeah, yeah. that everything that you're looking for me to do in your life, I'll do it for you. Everything that you ask me for, I'll do it for you. But you got to die to yourself. Yeah. You got to give up your own will and follow me. He, I believe he even asked the disciples, yeah. give up what you're doing and follow me. Yeah. And in order for us to be built up and to build the kingdom of God, we got to give up what we like. Yeah. We got to give up what we love for ourselves on, and love Christ enough to give it up and follow him. Come on, Pastor. And follow him. And so I want to continue to, with the sermon topic today. Are you are almost there? Don't stop. Don't stop. You're almost there. Don't stop. And so we're talking about Peter here. And so when we look at this text, Jesus has come from the other side because he understands that there's a the disciples are in trouble. They are in trouble. But before we get there, let's break this thing down. Y'all know I like to give definitions. Amen. So I want to break this thing Take down. Your time, You're almost there. Don't stop now. You're almost there. Don't stop now. When we look at the word almost, uh -huh. the word almost is defined as not quite. Mm -hmm. Not quite. Okay. Nearly. Not quite. And see, before we get into some of us in the body of Christ, have think we have arrived. Jesus. But I'm here to tell you, almost. 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 Not quite. Not quite. But you're almost there. Yeah. Praise God. And we, won't, we, we won't reach perfection until Jesus comes back. That's Amen. Real. That's real. And so we're almost there. We're almost, we're almost at that place where Jesus is coming back. Uh -huh. And we're almost getting ready to get him. Good to see him. But we're not there yet. Not there. Amen. We're not, you know, we still got to continue to work out our own soul salvation. Yeah. We got to continue to pray. We got to continue to fight in the spirit realm. We got to continue to worship him. We got to continue to adore him. Yeah. So we're almost there. Uh -huh. We have not there. gotten there. At the moment that you think you're there, God will do something to remind you that yeah. you're not there. Yeah. Right. God, right. God, right. to remind you that you're not there yet. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and if, we, if we're there, we wouldn't be going through trials and tribulations. Yeah. Right. If we were there, we would not face obstacles. If we were there, we would not face opposition. If we were there, we would not have to pray in the spirit. We would already be successful at being with God in the kingdom. Well, Somebody say, you're almost there, but not quite. You're almost right. there, not quite. Right. God has a way of reminding us that we have to humble ourselves. Yeah. We're not quite there. Amen. Just because we sing and praise and worship don't mean we arrived yet. Yeah. Just because we ain't ready to go on a new building don't mean we got there yet. Yeah. We still got some stuff to do. That's we right. still got some stuff That's to right. work out. And God is not coming back until he's decided that we are ready to go meet with him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. So we're almost there. That we're almost not quite. Not quite. Not, not quite, quite. Nearly. 
Now, I, I, I want to go against the grain this morning because there's an old saying out there. Some, I believe it was Brandon that said, almost doesn't count. Uh -huh. Brandon said that, amen. And some, some say that almost don't count. Wow. Um, and, and I beg to differ, Brandon, this morning. Come on, amen. Brandon. I beg to differ because uh, almost don't count. It doesn't count when you have quit. Yeah. Well, ah. uh -huh. almost don't count when you have quit. That's good revelation. But when you are still in the race and you are determined, almost does count. It counts for something. Which means if I'm almost there, which means I'm still in the race. Which means I haven't quit yet. Which means I haven't thrown in the towel. Which means that I haven't given up on God. So yes, my almost does count. Thank you, God. Look at your neighbor and say, my almost does count. My almost does count. My almost have purpose. My almost has purpose. I didn't throw in the towel. I didn't quit yet. I didn't Father. This is good already. Not quite, but it's, it, it's got purpose. Thank it's got you. purpose. Yes, and so almost, not quite nearly. And so, Brandy, I beg to differ with you this morning, baby. That almost does count. <laughs> it stands for something. Yes, uh, the scripture says, I press toward the mark, which means I'm in route, which means yes. I'm still going. Yes. Hallelujah. And even though I haven't got there yet, doesn't mean I ain't going to get there. Ah, yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So right. almost does count. I feel that thing. Amen. Well, Amen. almost does count. And so when we look at the word almost, once again, for you hearing, not quite, but nearly. Uh -huh. And then we look at the adverb of there, mm -hmm. it means to that place or position. Uh -huh. Which means that I'm not, I'm almost there to that place uh -huh. or position. Uh -huh. Which means I don't know what place I'm going by just now. I may not be able to see it with my natural eyes, but my faith. Yes, sir. It's producing yes, an almost yes, spirit. Sir. Yes, which sir. means that I'm not going to give up in the process of getting to where you have me designed yeah. to be. Yeah. And it means that if I'm almost there, which means there's a there's a place for me, there's a position for me. There is something that God has to do in my life. There is something that I'm supposed yeah, 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 to accomplish. Yeah. There is something that I'm supposed to complete. God says, I will complete the work which I begin in you. Which means that if you don't quit now and you keep pressing toward the mark, you'll get there one day. But you got to have an almost spirit yes. ah, which means you gotta have a keep going which means you gotta push yourself which means that's our thing this year push harder bc yes. which means that even though i'm tired i still gotta almost on the inside yes. even though i don't want to do it but god i'm not doing it for myself i'm doing it for you to get glory yes. there is somebody else looking to see who you are there is somebody that wants to worship you and god even though i'm weary i'm still gonna press toward the mark thank you god I'm still going to keep going. Thank you, Father. Yes. Friends may walk away, but I'm still yes, almost right. there. I'm almost Matter of fact, I I'm need you to walk there. away to, under, to me to understand that it's not about you, but it's about uh -huh. God. Yes. Yes. Fact, I need you. I say this all the time. I need you to open your mouth and say some stuff about me. Yes. No, it's not going to feel good, but that's a push for me. Yes, I need right. you to ridicule me because that's a push for me. And the more that you talk about me, the more I'm going to give God glory because the Bible says in all things, give thanks unto God, which causes us to try yes. Yes. Thank you, Father. So I got a reason because I'm Jesus. almost there. I'm almost there. I'm Jesus. almost there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm almost there. Oh, oh, I'm almost there. Thank you, God. I may not be married yet, but I'm almost there. Oh, God is yeah. still working on me. My marriage may not be perfect, but it's oh, almost yeah. there. Yes, 
God. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Protect those things, God. Thank you, Father. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. That in spite of the flaws of who gave us birth, God has still got a plan for our lives. He still got purpose for our lives. Praise the name of God. And so I'm sure that everyone in this room has felt at one time or another that you weren't going to make it. That you weren't going to come out. That I just didn't feel like this is just too hard for me. This is just too difficult for me. This is just too challenging for me. But I'm almost there, God said. You're just almost there. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? You're just at the edge of your breakthrough. And, and if one more thing happens, I'm going to lose my mind. But if you just stay in God, God will give you peace. That's a passes all understanding. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. So when we deal with this word this morning, when we deal with Peter and the rock cycle, one thing you got to understand about a rock cycle is that it's a continuous process yes, Lord. that the rock cycle never ends. Yes. In fact, the one rock breaks down into other pieces and it transcends and forms into another rock. And then that rock breaks down into another piece and some other some little substances and it creates another rock. And then, and then if you look at the rock cycle, when that last rock, even this rock breaks down and then into sediments and sediments now break down into, by weathering and, uh, and eroding and it creates sedimentary rocks. And the sedimentary rocks are broken up by heat and to pressure. And then they create metamorphic rocks and metamorphic rocks, amen, are developed underneath the ground and, and then a volcano pushes it out. But it's got to be through heat and pressure and it's got to be melted and when it yeah, melts yeah, yeah. it shoots out and when it shoots out it creates another rock from the beginning which is called igneous rock and there's two types of igneous rock there's one interior and there's one exterior and the one that's exterior produces crystals which produce crystals produce diamonds and I want yeah. to tell you that in the middle of you almost being there God is trying to produce a diamond God is trying to produce something that is unbreakable strong. God is trying to produce something that can scratch other minerals God is trying to produce something that won't move when he comes. Thank you, God. I'm almost, I'm almost, I'm almost, somebody say, I'm almost there. I'm almost, I'm almost there. there. But I got to go through the process. I got to go through the process. So when we look at this text, I'm going to Thank you for the process. Yes, Lord. Before you long. I feel God moving in here. I feel God. I'm trying good. to get, but I feel God, Elder Kelly and, and Dick and Kelly, and Melissa Simon, I feel yes, God moving to shift our ministry Thank to God. another place. And I'm not just yeah. saying that because yeah. Facebook is watching. Yeah. I'm not saying that because yeah. you're here. But I'm saying because when I feel you down on the inside of me, that we have been through some stuff. Yes, and we have faced yes, some yes, things. Yes, I'm going to give you much more. I'm going to give you more than what you asked for. He said, I shall do a new thing. I shall do it seemingly, abundantly, about all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yeah, God is working some things out in the last one. God is allowing some stuff to break. 
break up inside of us. God is allowing some things to be purged out of us. God is allowing our mind to be transformed. God is taking to a deeper level of worship and praise. And he's doing all of that because he got somewhere for us to go. And when we get there, our praise is going to be different. When we get there, our rejoicing is going to make a ricochet in the earth. And the earth is going to have to bow down to the living God that's raised inside every last one. Glory, glory. Oh, God. Glory, glory. And so, when we look yes, at this text, Matthew 14. Oh, goodness, Matthew 14. Oh, Thank you, God. Thank you, hallelujah. Thank Matthew you, God. 14. Hallelujah. Verse 24. We find that Jesus told them to go home. And when he told them to go home, Jesus went by himself and he went to pray. And the Bible says that in verse 25, 24, but the ship that they were on was now in the midst of a sea. Uh -huh. And the Bible says here that it was tossed with waves from the wind was contrary, yeah. which means the, the wind and the waves that were produced by the wind was causing the boat to move uncontrollably. Uh -huh. And the Bible says that the disciples were on that ship. Have you ever been in a place where stuff has come in your life and it's just causing you to move yeah. uncontrollably? God, I'm trying to yeah. stay put. I'm trying to stay on this course. Yeah, yeah. But God, if one more thing happened to me, it's going to push me. Yeah. And, and But yet, I still, I'm still in the boat. Oh, I have not tipped over, but I'm still in the boat. And so God says here Jesus. that the boat was the boat was shifting and moving simply because of the wind. And I want you to understand that there is going to be some wind that comes in your life. Yes, There's going to be some wind that's going to blow against you. Yeah. And, and some of that wind is needed for you to keep going. Thank some God. of that wind is needed for you to understand that you're still alive. It's great to be able to feel the wind because some of us, some people don't feel the wind. Some people, some people are still upon the earth and can't feel the wind. But there's some people that are buried in the earth and can't feel the wind. But thank God that I can still yeah. feel the wind. Thank God. Thank God. I still can feel the wind. And in verse 25, he says, in, and in the fourth watch of the night, uh -huh. which is about three o'clock in the morning, yes. Jesus came toward the disciples that were in a boat that was shipping, that was walking and tossing back and forth. And the Bible says he was walking on the water. And when the disciples in 26 saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. They were terrified in their, in their fear. And they cried out, it's a ghost. And let me tell you something in here. Uh -huh. When you're almost there, you don't have time to be fearful. Yeah. When you're almost there, yes, you don't sir. have time to be moved by what you see that really don't look like God. But it is God because some stuff that God is doing it may not look like him but it's really him and you got to keep your eyes on him you got to be focused on him you got to know his voice in this season you got to know what it sounds like and what it don't sound like because if you don't miss if you do miss out what God is trying to say you'll miss your opportunity That's right. and so he says here they said it's a ghost it's a ghost he said but in verse 20 he said but Jesus spoke to them at once he says, don't you be afraid. Here's the encouragement. Yeah. You might be on a ship that's tossed to and fro, but I'm with you. I'm right there with you. The scripture said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'll never leave my seed begging for bread. And if God has said all of those things about you, Minister Brennan, and you, First Lady, that means he's with you in the midst of what you're going through. He's not going to leave you out on the sea by yourself. He's not going to leave you out in the wilderness by yourself. In fact, he told the Israelites that I'll be a cloud by day and a fire by night. He even told them that I will bring water out of this rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. in the middle of a wilderness. In fact, he yeah. told them that I departed the Red Sea where you can walk on dry land. And if I did all of that for you, I'm still with you even in the midst of the yeah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank so hold your head up high. Thank you, Lord. He says here in verse 27, he says, but Jesus spoke to them and once he said, don't be afraid. He said, in fact, he said, don't be afraid. And here's how we have to cancel out fear. Jesus said, don't be afraid. He said, but take courage. I am here. Uh -huh. And this is how we as believers have to speak to our own self and encourage us that we are almost there. I cancel out fear, but I take the time to encourage myself. I get rid of God, but I, I call myself whole and well. I get rid of fear, and I call my head the righteousness of God, that I am his son, I am his daughter. And because I belong to him, there is nothing that can separate me from being in God's presence. There is nothing that will keep me from moving forward. Yeah, there is nothing yeah, yeah. that would keep me from going back yeah. because God is with me and if God is for me then he's more than the world yeah. against me. That's the for word. God I live and for God I die. I don't care what is happening in my life. I'm still going to trust God. I can touch myself and encourage myself because he said when two or three are gathered together touching and agreeing uh -huh. in his name he shall be in the midst. Yeah. But when he died he said I won't leave you confident but I'll send you a Holy Ghost and if you got the Holy Ghost you got more 
than one person inside of you. And all you got to do is when you feel down, sister Hunter, is touch yourself and you will begin to encourage yourself. Yes, God. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. How and he says, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Then Peter, yes, God, called to him and said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me, because you know, where he watches, the reason why he asked that is because everybody else started shouting, it's a ghost. Uh -huh. And see, you got to be careful about the people in your life who yeah. tell you. Uh -huh. You got to be careful about the people in your life who is fearful and can't see what you see. And you got to be real careful because those spirits are transferred on you. And once you start believing, you start now doubting. Because other believers who don't have the true faith will start saying, is that really him? It's a ghost. I, 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 it's a ghost. And because they are saying it's a ghost, you'll just agree with them and say it's a ghost too. Ah, I know. Say that, sir. But he says here, My Lord, I'm going to go a little further. Peter. Had the audacity. Yes, Watch this. Come on, yeah. When everybody else shouted, it's a ghost. Mm. Uh -huh. Peter had the audacity to say, if it's really you, yes, uh -huh. call me out to the water. Uh -huh. yes, Lord. Everybody else is saying it's a ghost. And we didn't even ask the ghost if it really was a ghost. So y'all sitting here being timid. Yes, Let me ask a little courage, a little bit of courage like the lion, and say, is it really you? Yeah. 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 See, what? And I'm, I'm going somewhere. Y'all stay with me this morning. He says here, he says, Lord, if it's really you, mm -hmm. tell me to come to you yes, Lord. walking on the water. And he says, verse 20, yes, come, mm -hmm. Jesus said. Now here, we're dealing with the rock cycle. Yeah. We understand, as I so eloquently spoke <laughs> about 10 minutes ago, that rocks are solids. Mm -hmm. Solids, which means they are hard. Yeah. Yes. Which All means right. that if you put a rock in water, Come on here. Okay. it would begin to sink. sink. Uh -huh. Right, yes. right, right. Now we did some research, <laughs> my wife and I, and maybe you may be able to help me with this. There's only one type of rock mm -hmm. that has the ability to float only for a little while. Okay, little okay, while. okay. And it's, it's called pumice. Mm -hmm. And this rock has holes in it mm -hmm. that gives it the capability to float just a little while. Okay. Mm -hmm. Notice the key word here, Mr. Burnett, is just a, a little, little while. while. Because eventually those holes will now be filled with water. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. And now it will cause the rock that was able to float now to start sinking. Uh -huh. right, right. So I want to encourage you that even though you start sinking, doesn't mean that you don't have the ability to swim. My God, my God, my God, my God. My God. Good. Right, because what you got to understand <laughs> is that rocks are needed at the bottom of the ocean. Rocks are needed at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Which means that if an ocean can be built off of something that's dead, that means you have the ability to swim and tread upon it. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. He says, so Peter, with his courageous little self, he says here, so Peter went over the side of the boat. Mm -hmm. And the Bible declares here, and he says, walked on the water yeah. towards Jesus. That's right, Damon, walked. Amen. Mm -hmm. Walked on the water towards Jesus. Mm -hmm. But here comes something that happened inside of Peter. Here comes well, Peter began to get filled with water. Now notice that he said that Peter, upon this rock will I build my church. Right. And we understand that the rock has to be of uh, dead material in order for God to build. Right, uh -huh. right. He says, but in verse 30, but when he saw the strong wind and the waves. Here, let's stop here for a second. Because when I was told this story as a little boy, they told me that when Peter walked on the water, that he took his eyes uh -huh. off of uh -huh. Jesus. Uh -huh. But the Bible says he never took his eyes uh -huh. off of Jesus. It just came a little turbulence and it came a little wind and it came a little rain and Peter began to fearful, not because he was watching Jesus, but because of what was surrounding him. Uh -huh. God. And so you got to study the word for yourself. Because yes, right. I promise as a little yeah. boy, the only reason why Peter sank was because he took his eyes off Jesus. But the Bible yeah. never said that he took his eyes off Jesus. It just said that he started looking at the wind and the wave. But he couldn't see the wind. He could feel the wind. Yeah. But he had to look at the waves to determine what his turbulence was. Ah, yeah. my God. Yeah. Ah. And he says, ah, nice job. Yes. He well, says here, but when he saw the strong 
wind and waves. Yeah. He was terrified oh and began to sink. Well. And, and, and this is the powerful thing here. Two things that Peter, Peter, so let me tell you something. <clears throat> Even though at the end of this text, I don't want to jump in here, but even at the end of this text, he said, Jesus says you have little faith, mm -hmm. but he didn't tell Peter he didn't have no, no faith. faith. That's oh, right. That's right. right. That's it. He didn't tell him he had no faith. He just said you had little, little faith. faith. Not enough. In other words, there was still something inside of him. Uh -huh. it, 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 Jesus was trying to increase his faith, faith capacity. That's right. He didn't have, he didn't, not that he didn't have faith. It was just that Jesus was trying to get him to increase his faith. Let me tell you right, something. Right, there right. are going to be things that's created in your life where little faith ain't going to help you. You're going to have to build up your faith. You're going to have to build up your most holy faith. That's right. You're my house. Right. You're my house. Right. My God. <laughs> and even a mustard seed is big in its own right. Uh -huh. Let me tell y'all something. Something comes out of a mustard seed. That's, That's right. right. The seed ain't but so big. That's right. right. But it produces big things. Right. And just because you are small in stature don't mean that greatness won't come out. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So watch this. Greatness of the he says, save me, Lord. Uh -huh. Save me, Lord. He shouted. Yes. He shouted, save me, Lord. Watch this. Let's let's dig this text. Y'all still here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right here. He shouted. Watch this. He shouted mm -hmm. because the scripture says that he didn't take his eyes out off of Jesus. Uh huh. But the scripture says he started seeing the wind mm -hmm. and the waves, mm -hmm. and maybe the wind was causing the waves to move so uh, erratically that it was making all of this noise, uh -huh. and that me saying "Help me, Lord" wasn't going to cut it. That I had to scream as loud as I could for the simple fact there is excess noise that's surrounding me. Ah. And in the midst of turbulence and in the midst of turmoil, me just murmuring something ain't going to yeah. be God's attention. Yeah. This is why he says shout with the voice of triumph because he understands that your shouting is coming from a place where a whisper can't come. Ah. A whisper can't come. Jesus. Yes, your shouting has to come from a deep Place. Yes, that's right. That's right. When you at a football game and you hollering, that don't just come because you look pretty. It comes from a deep place. <laughs> it comes from a deep place. You gotta muster up some stuff to shout. Yeah. You gotta have some energy to yes, shout. Yeah. There's some electricity that's like that got to flow in you to uh -huh. produce the shout. How do you? Yeah. You gotta be charged with power and authority yeah. to shout. And so Peter said, "Help me, Lord. Help, Help me, Lord." Lord. Yes. Help me, Lord. Watch this. Verse 31. And it says, Jesus immediately. Immediately. Immediately, mm -hmm. immediately reached out and grabbed him. Mm -hmm. And then he says, you have little faith, Jesus. Why do you doubt me? I want to deal for a little bit, just a little bit longer. We're getting ready to get out of here. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. After Peter had opened his mouth. Yeah. And after Peter had shouted, mm -hmm. the Bible says that Jesus immediately, immediately, which means that he rescued him without question. Without question. Thank you, God. Wow. Which means that Jesus didn't second guess anything. Uh -huh. Yeah. That he was readily and available to catch him yeah. when he asked for assistance. Uh -huh. Yeah. There are some stuff that's in your life that you asking is the only way that is going to move God. That's right. That's right. The Bible says, knock, and then the door shall be opened. Yeah. Ask, and yeah. then it shall be given. And so some stuff in your life, the only way it's going to move is by you shouting uh -huh. and asking for help. Yes, sir. Watch this. Take initiative. Watch this. I promise I'm getting ready to come to an end. Let's, let's, let's deal with this for a little bit. Real good. Let's deal with this for a little bit. First lady, if you would mind standing. This is the boat. Uh-huh. Right here. We just came back to ship. Yeah. Amen. Peter steps out on the boat. Mm -hmm. The scriptures never said he had a ledge. Yeah. It just says he steps out on water. Right, uh -huh. right, right. And the Bible says that he has his eyes on Jesus. Uh -huh. And as Peter is walking, he is steady looking at Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is coming towards Peter. Peter is going to him. Stop right there, Jesus. Praise God. And and he says, he says to Peter, Peter says, Peter starts looking around. 
and feeling the wind and looking at the waves. But he starts, he's, he doesn't look around, he starts feeling and seeing it upon him. Uh -huh. If you can visualize it. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And his eyes are still on Jesus. Watch this. And Jesus says, help me, Lord. The Bible says immediately that Jesus reached out and grabbed him. Uh -huh. Which means that Jesus had to be in close proximity right, uh, right, to right. be able to reach and grab him. Right. Right you got to understand that when you are in trouble uh, and God. if you ask for help, oh, Jesus is not a distance away from helping you, but he's right there in the midst of your trouble, uh -huh. which means that any time that you feel down and any time yeah. that you feel out and any time that you don't feel uh -huh. like you can go any further and any time you don't feel like you can make it any further, yeah. all you got to do yeah. is open up your mouth yeah. and begin to shout and he immediately grabs. Thank you, Thank God. you, Father. Thank you, God. 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 My God. Watch this. Hallelujah. My God. Which means, my God. Which means, watch this, if you will. Hallelujah. Jesus said, he said, if it be you, Jesus, call me to come and walk on the water. Peter's focus was on getting to Jesus. All right. He didn't make it quite yet. Ah. Almost. But almost. But almost. 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 Yeah. Thank God. Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah. This is how you know you almost got That's, God. That's it. Because the moment that Jesus, he didn't get to Jesus, uh -huh. he was almost there. Almost there. And because he had a little hole in him, and because he was a little, uh, uh, a little tainted a little bit, uh -huh. his faith got scary. Uh -huh. And he began to sink. But he said, Lord, help me. Help me and Lord. the moment that he cried for help, almost reached him to his Woo! destination. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. His almost yes, Lord. reached him yeah. to his destination. He was not necessarily in the room with him, ah. dancing with him, but he was somewhere in proximity, yeah. which means that your almost gets you close enough. Thank you, Lord. You're almost. Thank you, Lord. Gets you close enough. Hallelujah. Close enough. That even at the edge of your breakthrough, Hallelujah. all you got to do is open your mouth and he'll help you Hallelujah. get to the end. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's good. Father, thank you. Let me look at this text for a couple seconds. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. And then the scripture yeah, says, yeah. watch this. The Bible says here mm -hmm. that he says, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. And he got him. Uh -huh. All right. The scripture after this says, when they got back into the boat. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. But my question is, what happened between him grabbing him right. then getting back in the boat? Yeah. There is something missing in between those two phrases or yeah. those two scriptures. But if y'all can just deal with me just for a little couple more seconds, I kind of fathom that when he said, help me, and he reached out to him, that Jesus now pulled him close to him. And they walked back together uh -huh. on the boat. Uh -huh. So my God. Really it seems like you're getting ready to sink. And it seems like that you can't make it anymore. All you got to do is shout. And God is going to reach out and grab you. But he's not going to leave you out there by yourself. He's going to take a couple steps with you. And walk you back to your place of where you come from. And let you know that everything is going to be alright. I know you can talk. It's going to be all right. Just walk with me a little bit. Oh, God, I thank you. Just walk with me just a little bit. Oh, That's God, all I need you to do. I know your bank account is in a negative, God, but just walk you. with me a little bit. I know oh, you don't seem like God, you're God, you are work anything, but just oh, walk with me a little bit. Yeah. Hell and hot water, and you seem like you're in trouble. But just walk with me a little bit. Thank you, Lord. Thank a little bit, Lord. Just walk with me a little bit. 
Thank you, Father. Just walk with me a little bit. God, I thank you. Just walk with me a little bit. Just walk with me a little bit. God, I thank you. I've seen every tear that comes from your eye. I've heard your silent tears. I've heard your silent petitions. But God said, just walk with me a little bit. Trust me in this matter. Trust me that I'm going to see you through. Trust me that I'm going to see y'all through. Trust me and know that I'm God and that I'm not going to leave you out there on the water by yourself. You may be feeling wind and you may be feeling the waves hit your boat. But God says, why are you sitting on the boat? I'm looking at what's going on. And I'm there and it Anytime you need me, I'm with you. I'm just walking God. with you. Just walk with me a little bit. A little Thank bit. you, God. Yeah. Just walk with me a little bit longer. Thank you, Jesus. This is going to produce something out of your ministry. Oh. This is going to produce something. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord prophetically spoke to you a while ago through me as your husband and said that God is going to birth something out of your spirit, you, out of your song. Let me tell y'all, I've been telling y'all that you can't birth nothing out if there's something already taking place. Yeah. That means yeah. that there has to be a void. There has to be something yeah, empty. Yeah, yeah. And God is going to use this empty place in you, Ronnie D. Stearns. And he's going to use it to fill you up. That when you open your mouth, the very thing about demons trembling at the mention of the song in the name of Jesus that comes out of you. God says that it's going to flow like river. You're going to walk Thank on the God. water and the water's going to flow out you. You're going to walk God. on the water and it's going to come out you. God says, I've created this for you Thank to you, give Father. me glory. Just Thank walk you, with Father. me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank, Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. At the end of this text here, he says, Oh, glory to you. Thank you, Father. Too. Glory to your name, God. That when they climb back in the boat, Jesus. Yes, Lord. The powerful thing about this, he says that when they climb Thank you, God. back in the boat, Thank you, Jesus. Sister Carla, that the wind Jesus. stopped. Uh huh. Thank you, Lord. That the wind Thank you, God. and the waves stopped. Yes, Lord. He says here, verse 33. Then the disciples worshiped him and then they proclaimed thank you god you really are the son of god they exclaimed i want to encourage you today on this good sunday that you walking out on water thank you god has nothing to do with you yeah. but it has everything to do with the people who standing in the boat watching. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Some of them may explain you, it's a ghost. Help us, God. But you got a little courage to say, God. if it's really you, yes. tell me to come to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And even though I may sink on my way out there, I still got enough little faith Thank you, to step out and keep going. Yes. And what I'm doing is I'm doing it so God can get glory out of it. Yes. I'm doing it. So the people who were exclaiming that it's a ghost mm -hmm. will move their fearless mm -hmm. and their faithless doubting minds. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll now start transforming their minds to saying, oh God, we have to worship him. Yeah. Because he's truly a, a real God. Yeah. He brought them off the water. He, he calmed the raging sea. He yeah. made the waves stop. That's the God. I want to serve that Woo. God. I want to worship that God. I want to praise that God. No, I didn't walk off the boat myself. But I saw what happened. And just by the mere glimpse of God's miracles, it's producing something on the inside of me that makes me want to open my mouth and worship the true and living God. It does something on the inside of me that makes me want to exclaim that he is God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. All because you walked out thank you, Father. on the water. Thank you, Father. All because thank you, Father. You trusted God a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. You trusted God. All because you trusted God. Trust you, God. There are going to be people who want to doubt what God is doing. But I just got enough tenacity to give God what I deserve Him. And he in turn would get the glory. Thank you, God. This situation Amen. with Peter built him up. Yes, it, did. it built the disciples up. It, it encouraged them. Oh, it pushed them to praise God. Listen, the situation that we may be going through personally, God's trying to get praise out of that. He's trying to get worship out of that. You may be feeling like you dense. 
Jesus. that you're going to sink to the bottom. But the moment that you feel like that and the moment you cry out for help, God's going to pull you right up. He didn't just pull him. He didn't Thank just you, grab him. Jesus. But the Bible says he began to sink, which means that he started going lower. Which means that when he reached out his hand and grabbed him, that he pulled him up. Thank you, God. What are you saying, Pastor? Thank I'm just saying, you, you're almost there. Thank you. Almost there. Almost I'm encouraging there. you, Thank those who are watching, you're almost there. Almost there. Don't quit. Hold on just Don't hold stop. On. Keep going. Yes, Lord. Keep pressing. Yes, yes, Keep moving forward. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what comes your way, everything that is happening in your life is not happening to you. Thank you, Father. It's happening for you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And it's Thank happening for you, so God. God can get glory out of your life and the situation. Where are you today? Just stand to your feet. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Hallelujah. I'm almost there. Hallelujah. I'm almost there. Every head by eye closed, if you will, begin to pray. And examine your heart. Examine your heart. No more time to doubt God. I don't want to sink. I've been sinking. I don't want to sink any longer. So while I'm here, while I'm watching, while I'm listening, while I'm praying, I express in internally, God, help me. Help me. I'm almost there. And even though there's wind and there's rain and even though there's waves crashing, it doesn't prevent me from continuing walking forward. That's another lesson in the text. Thank you, God. That there was wind blowing and there was waves crashing against the ship that it caused the ship to toss. <laughs> so if it caused the ship to toss and you in the middle on the water and you're still walking, Thank you, God. if y'all can catch that I'm in the middle of wind and rain and the water's crashing the ship I just came out of and it's tossing the ship, but I'm walking in the middle of it. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. That says something right there. I hear the Lord saying that you will not die in this. I don't know who that is for, but you will not die in this. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You will not die in this. You may be trying, you may be sinking, but your present help is there. He says, I'm a present help in the time of trouble. Which means I'm there when there ain't no trouble, but I'm a right now help when this happens. Just examine your heart. Been through many things, but God has brought you over. Thank you, God. Been through a whole lot of stuff, but you're still here. You're still standing. You're able to say, you know what? I'm still here. Oh, because He's brought me out of it. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we pray now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to hear your voice speak through your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we thank you for being the lamp today. And we thank you, Lord God, for illuminating our path today. That we can hear and receive what you've spoken through Matthew. Yes, We love you, Lord God, that you have never left us nor forsaken us. Even everything that we've been through, you've been right there. But God, we ask that you forgive us for not asking you to help us when we've asked everybody else. But God, today we understand that you were there all along. Just waiting for us to ask for help. We're not neglecting the fact that there were people who were helped that you ordained. But God, sometimes we know that you're looking for us to ask you and you only. Yes, Lord. In this season, we look to you. We look to you to provide the resources that will help us. We're not looking for other people to help us and they're not the source that comes from the resource. Or the resource that comes from the source. We're looking for the source to provide the resource and then we can say that's God. So God, we thank you. Hallelujah. God, at this moment we ask that anybody that has a personal request today that you just come to this altar. Hallelujah. We touch and agree with you. We pray with you. Hallelujah. There's been some people who've been inboxing me this week about prayer. And we're going to lift them up. 
before we close prayer. Thank you, God. Praise the name of God. But if there be no one, amen, we're going to pray, but we're going to give an opportunity for those hearts who just want us to touch and agree with you to come. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to the land that was slain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. That the altar here is not closed, but God, we pray for those people that inboxed. Yes, Lord. That sent their prayer request. God, we lift up the we look up God, hallelujah, the prayer request was sent that he potentially may have to have surgery tomorrow. But then we got a report, God, that he may not be able to. So, God, whatever your perfect will is, we rejoice and say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. As you spoke to us so eloquently about two weeks ago, you make all things new. Yes, God. And God, there's purpose in this, whether he has to have it or not. Yes, God. There's still purpose in it. And God, we trust you in the matter. In the name of Jesus. And God, if he has to have it, you've already done it. Yes, Thank God. You. You've already fixed it. You've already Thank taken you. care of it. You've already gone before him. You've already did. And if he hasn't, God, we rejoice and say thank you in Thank you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we look at the young man that specifically inboxed me. And we're not calling his name, but we he's asking that we pray for his mind. Yes, God, in the name of the name that of we pray for his health. mind, Lord God. He we pray for his will be God. And God, we, we call those issues out to you before him today. And we lay them at your feet. God, because the request, the request is already made known. God, we pray we pray and we believe that his mind is sound. Even now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that his body is whole. And his spirit is healthy even now. In the mighty name of Jesus. We Lord, pray for his finances, God, that it will come. Yes, we pray God. for his mind to come in alignment with all things. Because we can pray for his finances to come in alignment, but if his mind is not in alignment, all of that doesn't matter. So, God, we pray importantly, most yes, importantly, for his mind. God. In the name of Jesus. That everything comes in alignment. That his mind comes in alignment. That everything else he's requested will come into full fruition. Yes, because there's somebody here at BCDC and out there praying for him. Yes, God. Hallelujah. We touch and agree that you shall complete the work, God. That you shall do it for this young man. Even now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that what he's wrestling with, that he no longer has to wrestle it, but he'll be victorious over it. Even now in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for where BC and DC is getting ready to go. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. We thank, thank you for where we've been thank you, God. and what we had to go through to get to where yes, we God. Yes, God. We honor you for it, Lord God. Yes, Lord. We thank, thank you, Lord God, that you would continue to give us the strength and tenacity to build up the people of God for God's Yes, spirit. Father. Yes, God. And as this year, we'll continue to push harder to serve you yes, Lord. in everything that we do. Yes, Lord. God, we love you today. Thank you for being in the midst of us. We praise you for it. Hallelujah. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. And we clap our hands and say thank you.